Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast. Today I was joined by my colleague Alde Bin Mardi, who heads up our private equity uh, executive search business. And we had a, a really, really interesting chat. We talk about how to reshape your career in the new year, skills required to be successful uh, moving into this digital age, and the importance of health, nutrition, and a solid diet of networking. I hope you enjoy it. And we're live. Albe! Hello! Hi! <laughs> Hi, Lewis! How was your Christmas? Uh, it was great, thank you. Well, I uh, guess this, um, everyone is uh, eating loads and um, have a great uh, gather with uh, family and friends. Lovely. So the diet starts on the 1st of January? Or the second. Or, the second. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Uh, yeah, cool. So we thought we'd do a little end of year podcast just to wrap up what's been going on. Um, for everyone that doesn't know, we work together and uh, we're both headhunters. So it's been an interesting year. And then we'll, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, how the year's gone, what we're seeing in the job market, uh, talk a bit about the future and how people can... Uh, reinvent themselves, stay relevant, uh, be successful in an ever-changing world of robots and AI and sci-fi and all of that kind of stuff, which should be fun. Yeah, sounds great. So, yeah, sounds good. <laughs> so, uh, Alde, how's your year been? Well, uh, my year has been uh, great so far, thanks. Uh, it's been very interesting, um, lots of hard work. Um, we've been connecting and probably this, this has been the year that I've uh, connected the most with people. I think that and what we were discussing the other day is that um, our network has um, gone uh, beyond um, age, beyond uh, you know nationality. It's, uh, we have tried to connect with as many uh, people as possible. And then just for example, within um, executive search, which is what we do, um, and um, you tend to connect a lot with partners and, and, um, and C-level people. But uh, it's been so um, empowering and helpful to connect with associates, for example, or with, with grads, with, uh, with junior people that, that are just um, trying to find out uh, what is the, 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 the ideal career move. Uh, maybe they start working in banking straight after uni, and then um, they're thinking two or three years in the line, what would be the best uh, ideal move? And so you've so you've got good like broader knowledge of just life generally. Yes. So people starting in careers, the challenges they've had, uh, what they want to do. Because when you yeah when you yes when you leave university or maybe not even go to university, I mean the world's such a big place. Yes. You can do so many different things, lots of different careers. Um, so that's interesting. And then you compare that to someone who's been working for like 40, 50 years and and they're typically in, obviously by then, in their career. Um, but it's changed a lot. Uh, although obviously if you're coming in from university now, you don't know anything different and that's just the world that you need to operate in to survive. Yes, nowadays. that's correct. And and um, and you shape it. What, what I noticed is that there are not such a um, right a path you, you shape it throughout the people that you meet. Uh, it happened to me. Um, I had a few ideas, a few uh, things that I wanted to do after uni, but um, then you you end up um, shaping it throughout. And uh, I think it's uh, so always good to keep yourself open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you wanted to be a singer, you wanted to be a dancer, you wanted to be a model. <laughs> well, you know, I've <laughs> Well, you know, I've, I've always liked dancing and um, as some of my friends know that I love uh, going out for a good dance. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't? Who doesn't? <laughs> but, uh, you know, eventually I thought, um, I'm not sure if I'm ready to make a career out of dancing. But hey, I've, uh, I, I love that. I love uh, performing arts. I love um, art generally. So I like to connect a lot with the creative world. And um, and uh, and yes, I think it's uh, it's uh, nice to have uh, or dedicate um, to multiple things. Um, I know colleagues of mine that they've uh, worked have normal working hours here in the city. Um, could it be financial services, um, and uh, then over the weekends or in the evenings do something else, such as uh, photography, which is something that I discovered this year and started focusing a bit more. 
Um, That's true. So yeah, no, you're right. Because when people are thinking about what job they want to do, uh, I mean, I guess most people probably, unfortunately, don't really enjoy their jobs, right? I mean, they do the bare minimum. They get up, they come to work, they do their thing, and then they're doing photography or sport or, you know, really things that, that they enjoy. Um, but everyone, everyone, it feels like everyone's after that job that they love to do. Yeah. And it's always the holy grail. Yeah. Um, but look, I think it's, it's, but ultimately it's, it's good if you do, to do both, right? You need to enjoy what you do every day, which ultimately is work because you need to make money. Uh, but you can supplement that with, with other interests as well to have a really balanced life. But it's, it's hard to find that utopia. Yes, absolutely. And you know what? It's also about the people, the people that you work with. It's, uh, and I think that no, not everyone gets to adapt uh, easily, and um, and you know it's um, you have to to uh, have a certain um, or, or be being friendly or uh, have a, a really good level of of um, to get to adapt to the environment uh, where you're working, and because not everyone's the same, and sometimes it's difficult to get along well with that's colleagues. All, and yeah, no, you're like right, that. and that's also thinking. That's also about like what size of company I think. Yeah, because all companies are different and. Um, I think half, well, about 50% of people work in SMEs and the environment is very different because when you're in a small business like we are, you get to know everyone like really well, right? You're yeah. with them five days a week. So you walk in, you know, maybe you're feeling a bit down. People notice, they care, you know, they get you up, they get you laughing. Um, it's interesting in bigger companies, yeah. um, you know, they don't have enough desk space for people anymore. Mm-hmm. Often often teams aren't sitting next to each other. Yeah. And so for them, it's it's really important that they yeah. put these networks in place and structures where people are feeling... It's, it you know, is so of, important. I mean, and do both things, events, social events um, amongst the, uh, the colleagues and also um, sporting events, the marathons. This is something really, really, really important, which we have done as well. Um, some of the events, the most random events we had, uh, I think, was a couple of years ago, were hip hop karaoke, uh, which, which was great. Absolutely. Which was great for bonding. Yeah. Um, you, <laughs> there you go. You start to sing it along, and then and then you connect with the, the people that you work. I and think then it's you're great. like, do I want to put my name down on the list? <laughs> and then in a drunken moment, you do, and then luckily you escape before your name gets called. <laughs> In the, in, but no, yeah. it's good. It's important to do that. Mm-hmm. But you see, if you're coming from uh, like you've done, yeah. you know, you've educated in a different country, you've come to the UK, uh, and you're working in London, which is great. It's really diverse and stuff. But um, yeah, you know, you really have to make an effort to do these events, networking, um, you know, getting out there, meeting people. And so, not, not for every, it's not for everyone. Yeah. Um, but it's important to do. Absolutely. Um, yeah. No, and uh, and re- regardless, I mean. Regardless, again, of the age, is uh, is is every person is a different world. And you learn so much from this, uh, from the um, you know socializing and meeting up with um, with uh, everyone. So apart from eating, drinking, socializing, uh, dancing, are you keeping healthy? We yes. spend a lot of time on it. Have you done anything? Has this been the year that you've really? You know what? I've uh, I started um, working on and trying new things in terms of sports. I've I've always liked doing sports activities. I've uh, I love swimming. That's the thing that I uh, that I love the most. Uh, but um, I'm happy to go for a run. I'm happy to do some weights. This year it was my yoga year. I'm actually actually um, this year I started doing. Um, it's, um, at, uh, it was called. Um, is, is this type of activity similar to yoga, like Pilates, through a friend of mine? That basically you oh, the one with the um, gyrotonics. Gyrotonics. Yes, That's gyrotonics, it. and it, it was it was great. In the this. So what is gyrotonics? So gyrotonic is um is a type of activity where you uh, flex your body using a, a machine, a very um could be kind of a complex machine, but basically you do a lot of circular movements to your body, so you can expand and. Uh, and you can become more flexible. Nice. And uh, it happened. It was developed in the, um, in uh, New York, I believe. This person uh, was a dancer, by the way, and a ballet dancer who broke both his toes, and uh, he was told that he couldn't dance anymore. So he built uh, this machine uh, on his garage. Nice. And uh, he started working out and flexing his 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 muscles, his body, and uh, eventually he recovered and uh, he went back to dance and he made this uh, a really good exercise. 
So I started doing that through a friend of mine, which is she's fantastic. And uh, then I started doing yoga as well. Nice. And um, have learned uh, also to meditate. And uh, I started doing this vinyasa how yoga. How often do you meditate? Well, once, well, well, I do this course every uh, once a, a week. Do a meditation course? Yeah. Well, it's not, basically they put you to sleep. You do yoga, right, but they right. put you to sleep. It's oh, okay. vinyasa. Oh, okay. Vinyasa flow. Well, yeah, so vinyasa flow. Yeah, I don't think it's supposed to be that meditative. <laughs> it's just you've worked yourself so hard it's amazing. to sleep. <laughs> well, but what really happens is that the next day I'm so much productive, so um, um, focused. So yeah, yeah. it does help a lot. Yeah, yeah. No, me too. I'm, I'm all over it. I've done yoga for probably twelve years or so. Wow! I started with um, I started with yeah probably vinyasa, then I did um, like hot yoga for quite a while. Okay. And felt felt amazing. So it's an hour and a half in a hot room. It's about forty degrees. Yeah. And it's really uncomfortable. Like you're just sweating and you're trying to do these poses. And I think I was I was probably one of the only guys in the room at that time. <laughs> I was just all women, um, you know, holding these poses, and I was like falling over and sweating. And uh, but I, it was really good. It sounds a bit funny, but I love putting myself in these like tough absolutely in trying in trying new types of activities. That's the best. Yeah, and you. I mean, after hot yoga, I mean, you come out there, you're sweating, you've you've like feel like you've done an amazing workout. And you feel a million dollars. Yeah. And you cruise home and you get the water in and stuff. So, so uh, like exercise and stretching and mobility has been a part of my um, daily, weekly routine since I since I started working. Well, actually, this year is when I started to do um, this type of of of, of uh, activities. And uh, gyrotonics is all about mobility because you are moving yeah. all parts of your body in a circle in a circular way in this, and uh, in, in circles. So um, that is the, the best thing. Instead of becoming only bulky, but you becoming flexible as well. Yeah, and that's why yeah. I started following uh, this guy. No, I had a portal, which is Ido Portal. Ido Portal, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he's, he's really good. He's been training a lot of yeah, Conor McGregor and and all those guys. The yeah, mo- movement's great. And I I slipped my uh, discs in my back in oh, no. uh, maybe five six years ago. Probably too much running and I don't know what. Um, so then I start. So I stopped running. Yeah. And then I went, so I just did basically yoga, yeah. Pilates, and then CrossFit. Mm-hmm. I have to mention CrossFit. And, uh, and so, and so all, the, all those three have been great. Mm-hmm. And it's meant that my, my back has improved unbelievably. And, uh, and I can do everything now. Mm-hmm. I'm ready to go. Great. I walk up a mountain, let's go. Have you ever danced Lambada? Uh, no, but I'm willing to try. <laughs> Well, I tried to uh, actually on Christmas Eve. Um, we spent on the uh, friends of mine from Brazil, my is over, and um, they've they've uh, they were teaching me how to dance lambada, and you have to actually. So where's lamba- What's lambada? This lambada, it's a, a Brazilian dance. It was very famous back in the eighties, oh, nice. and there was this this uh, this famous song, uh, became a hit by the way. And um, you have to dance in a circle way, but when when you're partnering, uh, you have to pull. Well, your partner to the back until like pretty uh, to the back, and then you do a curve, and then you go on your back. I like, like, a circle, she's, like a circle. Yeah, like a circle. It's like, but she kind of push you back, and then you push her back. So it turns out like a a whole, you know, you you you, you, you look like you're made of rubber. Amazing. And so, yeah. what is it called? Latin vibes. Yes, like yes, is uh, is is great. It's fantastic uh, type of dance where you gain a lot of flexibility. It's Amazing. really good for the back Amazing. as well. So all of that stuff's great, and so yeah. we do that a lot now. We also have standing desks in our office. Yes. Um, because we're not we're not born to be sitting. Yeah. And okay. and I was, yeah. You just end up getting like stiff, bad hips. Everything's connected. Yeah. So uh, so we've got these standing desks which we stand up. You can stand down. We we'll sit down, stand up, whatever. So that coupled with like yoga and CrossFit and running and we're and mobile as well. Well, our job is very mobile. Yeah. Not everyone's lucky enough to have a job where you're out and about as well. It's yeah. nice to have a bit of a balance. Yeah. Um, if you're in the office sitting all day, um, yeah, I think every couple of hours uh, it's important just to get up and walk around and stuff. Yeah. Because otherwise it's better for the digestion. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're sitting for hours and hours, you feel, I mean, like you can't do that for. No, no, yeah, I agree. I, I totally agree. Yes. I don't think you do that for too long. So, um, anyway, that's one thing I recommend massively is mobility, exercise, and obviously nutrition. 
yes. healthy eating, mm-hmm. which is sometimes difficult in an office because I'm actually looking at the biscuits right now, which we <laughs> have here. <laughs> um, but no, no, but that's important. So not going on a diet, but having a good diet. Yeah. And uh, what I try to do in terms of uh, health, I mean, having uh, being creative. Well, I like when I have some time, I like to uh, invent new recipes and things like that. So I made last night, I had some guests and I made this salad with butternut squash and uh, um, and pomegranate. Beautiful. Uh, it was very simple with uh, some lemon, uh, some lemon from Sicily, some um, extra virgin olive oil, a bit of salt. And nice. it was perfect. It was a good combination, healthy. Amazing. Yeah. What was the main course? Uh, <laughs> well, the main course was a nice <laughs> <laughs> leftovers. No, it was a, it was nice. We baked some pork with a nice sauce. Um, it was kind of a we, we cooked it with some beer and uh, oh wow and uh, orange and lemon. So it was cooked for about four to five hours. Beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. So. Um, Digi- the digital world. Oh, very interesting. We wanted interesting. to talk about that because um, we've seen this year a real increase in people hiring digital talent, right? Yeah. Um, so whether it's digital transformation, chief digital officers, etc. cetera. Um, so, yeah, what have you seen? Well, I've uh, noticed that a lot of uh, tech people are um, being hired and um, taking away on how to transform a business which um, is not um, digitally, um, you know, um, adapted. And uh, it's, it's a long process. It will take uh, quite a bit of time and, and, and investments in order to transform a business. And w- what I mean is that many, we have, we have noticed um, some uh, chief of businesses that um, believe their IT guys will help them take them through this journey, which is not the right way to see it. Uh, you need digital experts. You need digital experts from uh, the consulting firms. That's what we've noticed that are being, um, you know, offered new uh, opportunities in the, in the, in the different, across different business as chief digital officers, for example, or um, head of digital department in order to help them transform this, the business and reshape the businesses to, you know, get into the digital curve. Absolutely. No, no, it's been a really interesting space. I mean, whether it's digital marketing, um, digitalization, I mean, a head of digital marketing didn't exist, what, 10 years ago? Yes. The internet's only been around for 25 years. Mm-hmm. Um, but look, this last year, we've seen a real increase. And so for consulting firms, because they tend to work with loads of different customers, yes, they get to see what's going on, mm-hmm. uh, what different businesses are doing, and then they can bring that to bear with, yeah. you know, a portfolio company for a private firm or whatever business that they're going into. Yeah. Um, so that's interesting, um, but it's hard to find them, right? Yeah. Um, so there's quite a shortage of those types of people. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's an interesting area for people to develop into. Uh, if you're a grad and you're looking for an interesting career, there's a bunch of things you can do. But I think that whole area. Is growing and obviously like the data scientist I think was one of if not the most hired position last year um, so all of this data stuff is just you know, getting bigger and bigger um, and so if you're trying to think about what job you want to do or maybe move into a different type of job um, there's a great book called the hundred year working life uh, which puts forward the, um, the, the um, opinion that you're gonna have three careers in your life so less people are retiring now. There's no retirement age in the UK. Um, most people's pension pots are quite small, so you're going to have to be working a long time. So you have to find stuff you enjoy. Um, but you'll probably have three different careers, right? After 20 years of doing something, yeah. maybe you get a bit bored, you need to refresh. So you're seeing more uh, more people going into education at yeah. a later time. Yeah. Um, I think people who are doing MBAs is getting older. Yeah. That's quite a big investment. You know what? I And I agree completely. I mean, personally, I don't want to retire. Like, I was always um, have a, a role model. Uh, we call it, well, a good friend of mine. Uh, we call him El Padrino. El Padrino, <laughs> yes. El Padrino. He is um, uh, on his late 70s or early 80s. But he is so sharp. He was giving me, uh, teaching me about blockchain. And uh, he is um, so aware. He's always studying. He's always... Um, on top of his game, which is amazing. In a well, that's, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's one we'll move on to later, but the, he's got an amazing growth mindset. Yeah. 
um, you know, so this is, that doesn't matter how old you are, but always thinking, wanting to learn, wanting to improve yourself, interested in new technology. Uh, and this El, and El Padrino, I mean, he's, you know, classic. He's always looking at new stuff. He's always looking for the next opportunity. And so, and so if you have that mindset, where you all de- you can develop that mind that mindset um, that will set you up amazingly. Yes, absolutely. Um, blockchain, whatever it might be. No, awesome. Yeah. Well, and uh, uh, and uh, you know um, we're talking about the digital uh, experience. Um, there's going to be in the next five years such a big change in the way we see things. I mean, um, think about facial recognition. How it's gonna it's already creating an impact in our society, but it will have a a bigger impact in the years to come. I believe that in um, in China they already put in place a a facial recognition system in order to keep a um, a rating on its citizens. Um, um, yeah, probably. Yeah. And uh, and which is 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 incredible and how we're we're heading where we're we heading to. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean same, we're there already. Yeah, and uh, yeah. same will happen. What is happening at the airports, um, the, the, the 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 shopping centers. Um, anywhere you're just being recognized, and um, and these digital people will be in charge of, of having such a um, an important role or, or, on oh, yeah. on yeah. Tra- transforming I mean, those. There's some businesses. amazing um, facial recognition uh, technology coming out of Israel. Um, so from the army yeah. into startups and all this kind of stuff. There's even I don't know. If, I'm sure they will be using it, but I think Amazon are opening a new store on Oxford Street with with no no workers in, and so you walk in. Yeah, and they they know who you are from the minute you walk in. That's incredible. Whether it's your facial, probably a mixture of facial recognition, your phone, you can take whatever you want. Yes. Leave the shop, mm-hmm. and you get charged later. Yeah. Crazy. Um, I mean, it's going to be it's it's infiltrating the whole everything we do. Yeah. All of our lives. And, yeah, absolutely. But look, I mean, look, people. Some people are scared by it. Some people are super excited about it. Yeah. I'm very excited about you know yeah. what's coming. It's it's easy to get to look at the uh, the risks and the negatives and stuff, but yeah. I mean for yeah, I think it's fascinating. We just have to embrace it. Embrace it. Uh, have this growth mindset mm-hmm. and um, stay relevant. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's going to create so many new and different jobs. Um, mm-hmm. It's going to be outstanding because there's a lot of talk about AI. Um, you know, obviously going to be replacing humans, uh, automation, all of this kind of stuff. And what pe- what are people going to be doing? And so that's always the big, uh, that's the big risk, the big danger. That's what mm-hmm. people are scared of. Um, but I think if you think about it a different way, there's so, going to be so many really, really interesting opportunities. I think either, you know, you're going to be into, well, if you're, if you're well, for my daughter, let's say, both daughters, you know, what can I see them doing? And it's probably going to be either something in, you know, robotics or something like tech, techie or business related, but understand the technology. So you have to do, you know, one or the other, I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting. Yeah, and in London, here in the city, you see, you come across so many um, interesting new ideas, new, um, well, the startups uh, has been so dynamic and, uh, in the, um, in the, uh, the city. Um, entrepreneurs with the most uh, incredible um, um, new ideas for, for, for businesses they are raising. Um, they are putting their businesses out there and um, is shaping completely. Oh no, a, they are, they are. Thing. But then also the great thing is all of these startups, and if they start, if the startups are run by young entrepreneurs, um, you know they're all connecting with um, what they call the mentors, advisors, you know people with uh, people like Al Padrino, yeah, you know, with extensive business experience who understand you know how the city works, how they can raise funding. How they can put their plans together. So you, you really see a great, um, you know, like melting pot in the city of London of, you know, young fresh ideas, new fresh ideas, you know, experience, and uh, and they learn a lot from each other. Yeah, absolutely. It's very, uh, it's really interesting, inspiring, dynamic. Um, I think that's great. And we've we've talked a lot about um, what skills uh, we need, what people need for the future. And so I think it's an interesting, interesting space because I mean, who knows what's going to happen, right? Yeah. I mean, aliens could come down and push <laughs> us away, or uh, a meteor could hit the earth. I don't know. Um, and also, I mean, with with the uh, the speed and pace of technological change, I don't think we can even imagine what's coming in the next ten or twenty years. Um, 
I mean, I certainly wouldn't have imagined what we have now like 10, 15 years ago. It's really gone quick. Um, but I think there's certain things that we can, you know, improve about ourselves and uh, and uh, to be relevant for going, it's going forward. So I thought, you know, building your brand is super important. Um, certainly your online brand. You know, when people meet people, they always Google them. Um, and they're looking at their Instagram, at Facebook. They're looking at, you know, what pictures they're posting, how many likes they have, how many followers they have. You know, all of this stuff just creates this. Yeah, I agree. Like it or not, you become a brand. You you become your uh, your own uh, your own um, film, like the own version of your 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 um, movie. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's 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 where we're heading to. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. So I think now it's you know whatever stage you're in, um, focusing on building a quality online presence is important. So for work, um, clearly LinkedIn is currently. Um, like the, the place to be uh, professionally um, and so you know you're on there to be found ultimately and so you need to make sure that that well that's kind of your online CV um, but make sure it's up to date it looks good because um, you want people to find you and whether that's um, you know about for a new job opportunity or connecting or whatever it might be um, I think that's really important mm -hmm. the others the social stuff um, mm -hmm. make sure you have your the settings on that you want Yeah. A lot of people keep their stuff open. If, if they want that, that's great. If they don't, it can be detrimental depending on what photos you've got. Yeah. So, you know, just a proper, you know, personal digital strategy, uh, I think is super important. The other one we spoke about, which we briefly mentioned, is um, growth mindset. Oh, absolutely. I love this phrase. It's yes. a new phrase. I didn't coin it myself. <laughs> um, but, um, but you just see it. And you can never, uh, the last, you know, the last what, 10 years or whatever, you meet people and, I can never really, uh, you know, put it into like a nice phrase as to why they've been so successful and continue to be. And uh, I think growth mindset's a good one because, you know, you meet you meet some people and then they're just open to learning, developing, trying new things, you know, whatever stage of their career they're at. You can just, you know, it's infectious. Um, Absolutely. And then you see some people that they're just, they're just close to it, mm -hmm. whether it's, I don't know, uh, trying out a new piece of technology trying out the gyrotonics or you know whatever it is um and i think it's you know life will be it's hard if you're if you're if you know if you're if you're thinking in that way with uh, the pace of change and how dynamic the job market is and stuff um i think you need to really move to um to do that yeah no absolutely and uh, what you said uh, the other day with we were talking about um some elements about this growth mindset uh taking maybe a negative thing to turn it into a positive thing could be you know even, even as small as it could be but uh j just making the positive or a, a good thing out of it um absolutely we do a lot of we do a lot of stuff on this we've had um, a sports psychologist come in to do some work fantastic. with us which is yes. amazing yes so we've done a lot of a lot of work just ourselves on on mindset mm -hmm. you know because a scenario happens yes. you know whatever the train's late Um, it happens to you, it happens to me, it happens to everyone else on that train. <laughs> and we choose how we act, respond to it. Yeah. And depending on how we respond, it could, you know, if we think about it in a negative way, it will affect our day, mm -hmm. which affects our week, which will affect our month. Affect, yeah. And, you know, so so we did a, quite a lot of work on just identifying when we're going into that negative thinking spiral. Exactly. And just pulling ourselves out and not sweating the small stuff and just be like, exactly. whatever, and man. I have, learned, I have learned to stop sweating the small stuff <laughs> more than before. I mean, these, hard, uh, yeah. yeah, when we had this uh, this sports psychologist, I, th I think it's incredible how it changed or helped us to change the mindset. For example, we're always uh, telling ourselves not to fail, which is the wrong way of, 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 of putting it on, uh, on, on, your, on your, in, you know, in your vision. It's actually focusing on, I will succeed or, How can I? What are the ways I can uh, I can uh, I can succeed instead of saying I will not fail? Because eventually you will fail if you keep telling yourself I will not. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And the same happens to children. You tell children you you shouldn't do that, don't do that. That is the that's the first thing the children are going to do. They can't help themselves. Yeah, they can't help themselves. They take that chocolate and they're like, uh, all I want to do is take that chocolate. Whereas, okay, if you take your chocolate, you're uh, you're gonna have um, you know to go to the dentist next week. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you're right. Most people, yeah, they either think about failing or they're scared to fail, which stops most which stops people doing something. 
yeah. starting a business, trying a new whatever. Um, no, you're right. I, I think mo most people think like that. Yes. I mean, you can imagine if you're in a football team um, and you're, you're losing a lot. I mean, let Manchester United, let's say. Yeah. That this 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 half season's been tough, yeah. and these players, they clearly you can see it on their face, they haven't been in a good frame of mind. Yes. They were losing. And they probably stepped down the pitch thinking, we can't lose this game. And all they were thinking about, we can't lose, we can't lose, we can't lose, we can't lose. And now Solskjaer's come in, um, Mourinho's out, and they've won, I think, two, the first two games he's played. They've and maybe Mourinho goals. was telling them, you can't, you can't keep losing. You can't keep losing. I mean, it's maybe no questions about it. Wrong, he's a, yeah, he's a, a great, he's a great coach, but yeah. Yeah. maybe it was, you know... But it's just mindset, you know, position. like this guy's come in, Solskjaer's come in, an old legend at United, the old guy's out, and same players. Yeah. But then they just maybe just needed to change. And so this mindset thing's so powerful. Yes. Suddenly they scored like, I don't know, nine goals in two games or whatever it is. Yes. And everything's looking rosier. Yeah. So, you know, this mindset thing, so, uh, I thought it was so interesting. Yeah. Um, and yeah, super important. And I think also it's uh, important to, everything transforms, right? So, It's, uh, it's nice to um, have, a, I think, a good change maybe in the, in the routine that you're having. Sometimes you can be um, a bit um, uh, stressed from work. This is normal. But those, uh, things, those little things that could change or improve your day. Like the other day, we, we all, all of us decided to change desks. It's like, why are you changing desks? It's just because it was a little twist through our day. Uh, it created a bit of uh, chaos <laughs> the first hour. People were not happy. It wasn't the right location. But eventually, these things do make a, it do make an impact. Yeah, I mean, change creates new energy, and yeah. Well, I mean, we're creatures of habit, so you know, people do like their yeah. desk and all this stuff. But it's all changing. I mean, a lot of people don't have their own desk. at the hot desking and. So, you know, I think it's, it's good to find like a nice, a nice habit, but be very comfortable with change yeah. and, be, and, and, you know, like adaptability and flexibility is important. Absolutely. Um, and that, that's quite unique to humans. I think it's just being able to work with different people that you don't know, that you do know, and just being flexible. Yeah. Um, no, that's really interesting. Uh, being tech savvy as well. Absolutely. I think nowadays is super important. I currently don't know how to code but i'd love to know how to code yeah I just mean, to understand you know it's just a language like anything right uh, i mean you're great at languages yeah um, well uh, my uh, my goal is to speak four uh, languages by 2020 so um next i have one year to nice. uh, improve my french okay we can do, <laughs> we can do coding that counts oh, yeah that counts as a language yeah, yeah exactly the most popular language in the world is maths yeah yeah I'm sure someone correct me, but I'm pretty sure. Um, but no, on the tech stuff, I think it's important to understand the ideas behind automation, artificial intelligence, and make sure you know, you know the benefits and the risks associated with you know whatever problem that you're looking at. Yeah. Um, so again, it's all linked to this mindset thing, but just being you know open enough to say, hey, look, it's coming. What are the benefits? What are the risks? Where do I fit in? Yeah. Um, and so thinking about that, I think, uh, I think it's really important. Um, but I would also love to code. So I'm going to learn that there's some like online coding courses. Yeah. Just because it'd be quite cool. I was watching yesterday, these, uh, film of, uh, in, of the life of Neil Armstrong. Oh, interesting. And, um, I think that back then it must have been just unimaginable to, uh, even try to achieve such a mission. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, what's the next thing that's going to happen now? I mean, when we're t talking about flights to Mars, uh, could be a bit of, of a sci-fi thing, but it's going to happen. I think that it will happen. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And they're doing a game show. I'm sure there was talk of them sending, I don't know, 10 or 12 people to Mars just to start colonizing or something. Yeah, well, I, I, I believe that will happen. I mean, it's uh, if, I just don't know why we haven't been back to the moon after so many years. Well, cost. There was yeah. just a lot of, a lot of these things, like like even like airplane travel, they start with the governments like developing it and then business takes over and yeah. makes a real investment. Yeah. Um, but no, we haven't been to the moon for a while, but I mean, I guess like, why? Why do we need to? 
Yeah. I guess. I mean, they're focusing on other stuff and Mars. Uh, Mars. Yeah. Although I think companies are are, uh, are doing that, right? Mm-hmm. So you've got like SpaceX. You've got the um, the Amazon one, Jeff Bezos' one. Actually, I can't remember what it's yes, called. Yes, yes. Uh, um, I read something about yeah. that, yes. So there's a few. There's a few private companies that are like, investing heavily in in doing that. And for sure, it's going to happen. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, yes. Absolutely. I have uh, I wanted to um, to become an astronaut when I was a kid. Um, I was obsessed by it. I was watching all the documentaries about space, planets, and so on. Um, but um, I'm also a bit claustrophobic. Well, so I wouldn't, I'm not sure if I would no, be able to jump. There's no fresh air about that. <laughs> so you basically won't be going. You won't be going to the moon. Who knows? You won't be going to um, the space station, and you certainly won't be going to Mars. Well, I'm waiting for the commercial flights to outer space. Maybe. But would you be happy just to stay in the air, in the spacecraft for that long? Well, you know, I'm doing meditation, Lewis. That's, That's true. why I am, I am improving myself. Great mindset. <laughs> <laughs> I am preparing myself to. You know, in the future, hopefully, in less than 10 years, I'll be able to take that uh, commercial flight to outer space. Amazing. I'd love to do that. Why not? No, absolutely. I definitely want to go to, yeah, Mars, the moon. Yes. Or somewhere outside of Earth. Space selfie. How amazing would be that? uh, Absolutely. Space selfie. selfie. Amazing. (laughs) Amazing. Yeah, one day. I think we we need to do that. Uh, Yes. We can start a little recruitment office up on <laughs> the moon or Mars or something. Why not? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Why not? Be great. Be great. Um, the other, the other interesting thing um, I think is important nowadays is building your network, which we talked about right at the beginning. Yeah. Um, so despite AI, robotics, all this kind of stuff, um, I still think well, human connections have always been important and will continue to be. Absolutely. Um, you still, you know, still a lot of people. Um, get jobs through people that they know. Yeah. Um, they interview with people that have gone to the same uni. You know, all this kind of well, people call it unconscious bias. I mean, most of it's very conscious yeah. bias. You know, you feel more of an affinity to someone yeah. if you have a similar background. Yeah. And so I can't see that really, really changing. Although, you know, there's a lot of stuff that you know we're doing in our recruitment processes and companies are doing to try and level the playing field, which is you know really good and important to give people a chance um but fundamentally um you know the world uh is made up of, up of connections so you know wherever you are in whatever you do um i would focus on networking yeah. um with industry people um, with your colleagues you know make sure you maintain good quality relationships online offline you know spend some time meeting people you know, the job that we do, um, you know, we're out all the time, right? So we're meeting like one or two new people every day, keeping up with uh, people that we already know. And so it's just this whole interesting game of like connections and stuff. But if you're in a job like, in a, I don't know, if you're a, a doing a desk-based job, um, then you've really got to be proactive. And I think it's important to spend some time. Yeah, no, out. absolutely. And, and you have so many um, types of activities here in London. I mean, from... Um, like we were talking before, language courses or um, dancing courses, um, this uh, sports uh, at the gym. There's so much uh, to do. There's so many ways to connect, and uh, we're obviously in a big city, which is very dynamic, making things easier. But uh, you always find a way, even if you're um, in a smaller city, to to connect to people. Um, you know, my uh, my mom is not such a sociable person, right. but she's 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 great connecting. But uh, sometimes, uh, well, she's uh, now in Spain, and um, uh, she, and she came me, and, where, and she came from. Uh, she came from uh, Ecuador. Okay, yeah. yeah so she's uh, she's now in Spain, staying uh, there for a few months, and uh, she was uh, asking me uh, what is the best way to make friends because you know you just uh, jump in a new um, city, you move to, to a different city, and um, it's not that easy to to connect with people. And I told her, um, you know, why don't you do what El Padrino does? And she was like, who is El Padrino? <laughs> <laughs> this friend of mine on his early 80s is uh, the best networker. I mean, he just sits in a place on his own and people come to him uh, to have a chat. I mean, he's naturally gifted, I think so. Yeah. Uh, but um, I told her, why don't you just go to a bar, a little bar, a little cafe, sit, read your book, and uh, and do that 
you know, uh, at least once a day, if you have the time. And then you start connecting with the staff from that place, from that cafe. Yeah. And then you'll start to recognize the people that usually go to that cafe. And you start making few few friends there. And it's not that difficult because, you know, you start connecting with the locals. That's great advice. Great mm-hmm. advice. Because a yes. lot of people see it, even in a big city like, like London or whatever major city, um, a lot of people feel quite lonely. Yeah. And the depression rates are up and, yeah. and all this kind of stuff. And so... No, that's great advice. You yeah, because people like to be, you know, feel part of a community, recognised, and, and yeah, whether it's Absolutely. like the coffee shop and the guy or girl sees you there and is like, hey, what's up? And what's I agree on? with you. And I have a, a friends or people have told me that lonely uh, London can be a very lonely place. I know what they mean because you're always running. I mean, sometimes to to meet with a really good friend of mine. You know, I can we meet once every three months or every six months. Um, but uh, but here, what I do, um, I have um, different groups of friends. For example, my friends that speak Spanish could be from Spain or Latin America. We've got a nice WhatsApp group, and we're always organizing lunches on the weekends, um, meeting up for a drink uh, on a Friday night, and so on. Also, I used to play um, water polo. So um, I uh, connect with the guys that uh, I stay in touch with the guys that uh, that play water polo. Sometimes we uh, we meet once for sure once a year. There's a, an event, it's a competition, nice. um, and uh, we meet for that. And we um, organize socials um, around May. Um, there they throw every time a, 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 a Christmas party. Oh, amazing! Um, also, friends from uni. That's always a great, the, yeah, probably yeah. the best. To, to connect with and then here in the city as well it's great to um, for people who work in the city it's great to attend to the different events where you can you know uh, connect with people who work in the city yeah uh, because as uh, everyone's nearby and it's, it's great I mean everyone coming from different backgrounds from uh, you could be an IT person coming from insurance from banking uh, from all over the world all different parts of the world but then everyone likes to have a good time a good laugh. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and interact. Yeah. You've got to, there's a lot to do. Um, everyone feels like they've got limited time, but we all have 24 hours in a day. One of the most equitable, probably the only equitable thing we all have. Um, but yeah, you need to do something. And so one, any of those things, technology has been great for staying in touch. Oh, yes, absolutely. With the WhatsApp and Facebook or Instagram, whatever. Yeah. Whatever you use, most people use all of it. Um, but yeah, no, actively... Actively maintaining a good social network. And look, not everyone wants so many friends or connections or don't have time to, you know, keep up with it. Um, but, you know, we all need some good human contact, some, you know, good quality relationships, whether it's lots and uh, and not so deep or a small amount and deep, whatever type of person you are. Um, but, yeah, making an effort uh, definitely is super important. Absolutely. And I love that. Um, and then the last, uh, probably the last thing I think it's important for um, like future proofing yourself is being resilient, which we've talked about loads of times. Absolutely. Um, you know, focusing on building your resilience, um, which is your capacity to recover quickly from difficulties, apparently. Um, but no, it's so important in all different walks of life, in all different job careers, paths. So really focusing on building that resilience which is linked to the mindset, um, it's going to stand you in, in great stead. And, uh, yeah. and, you know, talking about that, I mean, how to recover from difficulties, there's a, a you come across uh, a lot of people here, uh, not just in the city, but generally, that uh, suffer from depression. Yeah. And um, it, that is a, it, it, uh, well, on the level of difficulty, it's, um, well, it's constant that you have to fight against, against that. And, um, you know, to all the people who are listening uh, to us out there and in, in, in going through this, battling against it, um, you, you know, meditation, there, there isn't a cure, right? There isn't a cure or it's not easy to say, I'll just overcome it and, 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 and you know, the and mind, stop having it. You yeah, know, honest, it's, it's yeah. difficult to, 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 to fight it because it's, it's a disease, it's a symptom that you cannot command it. Um, but meditation has been great. Uh, it's but proven it, to be great. Yeah. Well, also you've got um, so there's this heavyweight boxer called Tyson Fury. Yeah. That uh, fought Deontay Wilder a 
couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago. Oh yeah, well, we were talking about that. The other yeah, day. and so uh, he very publicly, uh, you know, um, said that he had depression and tried to almost killed himself and has battled it for a long time. And and so I was interested. I was listening to a podcast with with him. Oh wow! And he said that. Um, the, really, the way he's managed to turn himself around and, and so forth is through uh, exercise. Yeah. And he, you know, submerged himself on a six, seven days a week training because it's very difficult to feel um, to feel down when you're physically exerting yourself. But when you're the, uh, when you're low, uh, when you're feeling very low, it's difficult to wake up, I guess, out well, of yeah. bed and go to do the exercise. Yeah, there's a lot of well, you know, there's so many different types of things that one can suffer from, right? Yeah. Um, Absolutely. I mean, just for this guy, Tyson Fury, he, uh, yeah, I mean, for him, it worked, you know, physical exercise. Um, and I guess for me as well, you know, we're, we've all got, um, you know, like super demanding jobs, lots of priorities, heavy workloads. And so one of the reasons that I try and do some kind of exercise every day or as much as I can yeah. is because it's very good, like relieving stress. I never get stressed. Maybe that's just my makeup. But also, I do, uh, you know, I do a lot of like exercise, yoga, yeah. running, football, whatever it is. Yeah. For me, it's great mental like um, relief, if you like. Yeah. I mean, when you've got that barbell in front of you with some weight on, yeah, and you can't be bothered to pick it up, but you've yeah. got to pick it up because the person next to you is doing the exercises and stuff, and you're yeah. like, oh, got to pick it up, got to pick it up. Yeah. You can't think about anything else. Yeah. And you feel so good afterwards and yeah. stuff. So look, I mean, it's super complicated, obviously. I think yeah. all of this stuff is yeah. is linked. It's interesting. Um, clearly, everyone everyone is unique and individual. And yeah, has their own uh, things that they. Yeah, I mean, for me, about. if I have an, a day that I'm not um, feeling the happiest, I've uh, I would interact with uh, with people. I would uh, for me work to socialize a lot. And obviously, I mean, or go for a nice swim. I mean, but it works for differently for each each one of us. Um, I heard that uh, the having a cat helps a lot. A cat, course, a cat yeah. Unless you're the, allergic. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> apparently, you have uh, that that no as well. The um, the cat having a cat helps a lot for some reason. But um, anyways, it's just uh, going out there and uh, and uh, and overcome it, trying to find the best way to overcome yeah, it, definitely. even through meditation and other. other and other also, ways. the great thing now is that a lot of people who suffer from various different types of uh, mental illness uh, are coming out as well yes. and saying, "Look, I'm going through this." Yeah. And so, other people who are suffering from similar things yes. have, you know, someone to yeah. a role model or someone to look up to and say, "Oh, you know, they've trodden that path. Yeah. I can do it too." Yeah. And so that's great. And so more and more people, and you know, social media has been a great uh, platform for yeah. people to be able to share their experiences yeah. and views. And so that's, that's great. It's important to share it, coming out and share it, um, share each other's experiences because I've met great people, uh, very fun, very, you know, um, unique in the way of being that I suffer from depression, which has been kind of a shock because I never imagined, never even realized it. Absolutely. That it's important yeah, to share that. Yeah. yeah. Especially guys. Yeah. You know, guys don't typically speak about their feelings so much with exactly. each other. Um, but you never know what someone's going through. Yeah. Never know. So, yeah, great chat. Yes. We have um, 2019 to look forward to. Yes, absolutely. Um, so really a lot of cool things are going to happen. Uh, well, we're going to make them happen. Yes. You know, a lot of this. That's just the mindset. Good mindset, good exercise, eating well doing some good stuff and making sure we're equipped with the right skills. Um, we're going to be productive and yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say that um, um, just before we, we, we wrap it up, uh, how to reshape your career. This is something that I want to, to, to talk about sure. for 2019. Abs absolutely. Uh, because a lot, of, a lot of our friends have asked us or, or, or come to us saying, you know, um, Aldo or Lewis, um, I am tired of my, my of my work. I'm sick of my, my job. I um, I can't do do it with it anymore. So just they're riding that downward spiral. So how do you how do you um, overcome that? How do you change? Uh, well, you know, there's so many different ways. There's not a there's not the change completely industry. Change complete industry. Uh, change. Uh, try uh, doing a lot of uh, research about what's. Uh, what what's out there? I mean, what I think it's uh, more important your your core skills. Uh, it doesn't mean that if you're a banker, you have to move into banking. 
you can move into doing something completely different, uh, like recruitment. <laughs> or, yes, or um, people have launched, started to kind of this banker who all started opening up uh, restaurants, became a chef. Um, no, you're and, right. I think or move it, into consulting. Yeah, and it goes back to, yeah, this, you know, 100 year life. I mean, we're living longer. Yeah. Um, people probably won't be retiring. Yeah. Um, I was listening to uh, a scientist talk. Um, I think it actually might have been from uh, it might have been from Homer Deus, um, the All book right. I'm reading at the moment, amazing yeah. book. Um, and they were saying in the next hundred to two hundred years, uh, you know, we'll probably be living to 100, 150, something like that. Yeah, which I is a long imagine. time. Yeah. And so you know, we're always going to. I think we're going to have to. Have, we're going to have three odd careers in the future. It's quite hard though to move. I mean, you know, we do see people who are, you know, along in their career who want to change sector. It's really hard to change sector um, because, again, we were talking a bit about before, but people like people like themselves, um, especially in this tough economic climate. People don't want to take a risk on someone from a different sector, mm-hmm. uh, a chance on someone. So in reality, it's really hard even to stay in the same, in the same kind of type of job but move sectors. Mm-hmm. It's tough. Um, changing careers altogether is also really tough. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, if you're fortunate enough to have earned, earned well, you can afford to like, take mm-hmm. time out and go and do an MBA mm-hmm. or different study and re- reskill. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're not, mm-hmm. um, then it's yeah, it's really hard. Um, and so I think it's you know probably doing the things we've we discussed um, about being resilient, about networking, about building your brand, about being tech savvy. You know, if you're if you're focusing on all these things, then I think you know you'll find opportunities will present themselves um, from you know past um, colleagues, clients. Absolutely. You know, so you never know where the next opportunity is, and, and all of this all of this stuff is is ultimately mm-hmm. all connected. Um, and so I think you know if you want to change careers, do all the stuff that we've described, um, and and keep grinding because it is it's hard to. Yeah, and and um, I mean. You have to be aware that it's going to be a risk, but the only choice and the only option is to take in that risk if you really do want to change a career. Yeah. And uh, what it works well, it's um, telling the story. To always tell, be ready to tell a good story about what you've done so far, what you're good at, because you never know who you're going to meet. And uh, you get the usual question, especially in London, what do you do? Oh, by the way, um, yes, I have done this, uh, but at the moment I'm doing, trying to do that. And then you come across someone who tells you, well, actually, I am looking for someone with your kind of uh, skill set. Absolutely. And it, you know, it happened to me. I was, I was desperate looking for uh, a career change because I don't think, well, I've, I had a great, uh, a great experience in consulting, um, but I was ready to make the, the, the move. But, you know, you have 100,000 uh, consultants in London, what's uh, going to be the next move? And um, I never considered recruitment, to be honest. But a friend of mine told me, you know, although I think you have the right um, skill set to try recruitment, executive search. And we started doing a few projects together, and um, I loved it. Yeah. No, it's, I mean, it's a journey. I and mean, you never, I did chemistry at uni, I worked in the fashion and manufacturing sector. Yeah, it's incredible. You also made that move. Now, um, you know, I want to set up my own business, uh, which I did in the recruitment sector. Fantastic. And who knows what next? Yes. So that's a great. Let's uh, let's stop there before we bored people enough. Now. Yeah. Um, the sky is not the limit. The sky is not <laughs> the limit. The universe is not the limit. Who knows? Um, but great chat. Um, let's you. do this more often. Definitely. We can do our little, you know, finger on the pulse of what's going on. Um, maybe we'll, we'll do something in, uh, you know, to sum up the first quarter of 2019. Fantastic. Looking forward a, to that. Awful, awful lot of stuff happening in the first quarter of 2019. Indeed. Brexit, which we haven't even mentioned. Um, and who knows what else? Yeah. The world is a ever changing place. So, uh, yeah, have a great new year. Thank you. Um, you too. And um, great to have a good download. Yes. Um, we've already done our goal setting. Yeah. Which is very important. And see you in 2019. See you soon. Later. Bye. <laughs>